Welcome back. The dates uh, for the much-awaited Gujarat Assembly election have been announced. The state will vote on the 1st and 5th of December. Results would be announced on the 8th, along with that of Himachal Pradesh. Gujarat is uh, the BJP's strongest fort. They haven't lost power in the state since 1995. The Saffron Party would be banking on the immense popularity of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who also remains Gujarat's longest-serving chief minister to date. The BJP won 99 seats in the 2017 election, their first election in the state after Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister and had to shift to national politics. The Congress, too, improved its tally in 2017, but their recent performances in civic body polls and Hardik Patel joining the BJP would come as a setback. The Amadi Party also trying to gain a foothold in the state. We should also be discussing Himachal Pradesh. Voting is scheduled to take place on the 12th of November. The incumbent BJP grappling with infighting, with several sitting MLAs being denied tickets. The uh, opposition Congress also has its share of issues. This is the first time in 40 years that they are fighting an assembly election in the state without the presence of Veer Bhadra Singh, undoubtedly the tallest Congress leader from Himachal. Singh passed away last year. The state also has a 37-year-old tradition of voting out the incumbent government. Let's uh, go across to Nija Chaudhary, senior journalist and political analyst. And uh, we're also joined by PKD Nambiar. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Nija Chaudhary, if I can begin with you, give us a sense of how things stand in Gujarat. Uh, it is being called a three-cornered contest. Can the AAP make inroads? Will the BJP be able to improve with Stali since 2017? Where do you think uh, things stand for the BJP, the AAP and Congress right now in the state? Look, number one is the Prime Minister's state. The stakes are very high for the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, and they're putting all their might into winning it. And they will not only try and win it, they will improve their tally of last time, which had been reduced to double digit. Last time, if you remember, in 2017, the Congress put up a very good show. There was the Partidar uh, agitation led by Hardik Patel, who's now re gone back to gone to the BJP. And uh, uh, so uh, I think it is a triangular contest. The newbie Aam Admi Party is, is making its presence felt, making itself visible. And the Congress is, seems to have almost like given up. I know that Congress leaders have been quite agitated mm -hmm. that not enough attention has be, been given by the party to Gujarat as was as should as which, uh, was mm -hmm. expected and much more attention was given to the Bharat Jodo Yatra which of course has its own importance but they were agitated now they are trying mm -hmm. to make amends but a triangular contest will certainly be certainly be advantage BJP there's no doubt about that in the short run uh, the rise mm. of Aam Admi Party helps mm. the BJP. In the long run, AAP may pose a challenge to the BJP. But that is in the future. So Gujarat right. seems poised okay. to go back to the BJP as things stand today. Okay. PKD Nambiar, uh, the Aam Admi Party has been campaigning. They've taken out rallies in at least 30 districts of Gujarat. Do you think... Uh, they will be able to make some inroads in the state? Uh, well, if you really look at it, if you travel across Gujarat, which I have done uh, in the recent past uh, couple of days, I stayed in multiple places. I realized one thing that the kind of uh, importance what Amatni Party and Kejriwal has been given by the national media is not the case in the regional media or in the level in, uh, in the Gujarat. Yes, it is true that there is a, a gap of a strong opposition in Gujarat. For BJP, it is like the mecca of uh, 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 of their uh, political, uh, in a way, like a, a hardcore uh, uh, destination for the BJP. So there, uh, the, the Congress, as Nirjaji said, that coming down day by day, not giving that kind of an importance, uh, uh, both as a political party, also in the electioneering. Of course, they are trying to fill some kind of take some kind of an advantage of that, and uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal is trying its level best to do that. But the impact of that you will only be able to see in some of the major cities. See, politics do not happen only on the media bus. Politics also requires cadre, who is at the last mile at the booth, who is going to cover how many booth you are, you have your people uh, uh, at, at present. Or else, you need to have some kind of uh, anti-incumbency, major anti-incumbency, something that sort is required. Uh, on the contrary, in Gujarat, there is almost a negligible anti-incumbency. Even if 
If you really look at it from the last uh, almost eight years, there are three chief ministers have changed in, in, in Gujarat, but there is no problem both in the party or in the, mm. amongst the people. A little bit of fatigue, which mm. generally comes almost uh, okay. if a po political party is ruling for 20, 25 years, a fatigue is supposed to happen. But that has also been mm. taken care by BJP very, very mm. smartly like a corporate. So changing the ministers, changing the, the MLAs, okay. not uh, bringing some new faces time to time. Hmm. I think it's very, very advantageous BJP. There may be a dent in the opposition vote, which will okay. uh, Amatmi and Kejriwal's presence will make. That is going to be in the advantages of BJP, which is supposed hmm. to, according to me, it will go up to 125 or so seats. All right. Let's talk about Himachal Pradesh, uh, Nija Chaudhary. Uh, Jairam Thakur, will he be able to retain power? Will the BJP be able to continue? This state has a, has a history of flipping parties every five years. Look, uh, you know, I was in Himachal three weeks ago. Uh, it is evenly poised, you know, as far as ground level sentiment goes. A lot of people said, of course, there were the committed voters of the BJP who will stick by the BJP, but there were many people who said they wanted change and they would look to the Congress for it. Now, does the Congress have the wherewithal, you know, the oomph, the, uh, the, the, the killer instinct, uh, the organization, the planning to encash that sentiment and uh, show BJP the door this time? Uh, that remains a million dollar question. Priyanka Vadra Gandhi has been. Uh, campaigning now. they perked up the party. So let's see what happens. She's intensively campaigning in Himachal Pradesh. In fact, I heard a very weird story, and this is coming from the Congress circles in, when I was in Himachal, to say that it seemed to people whether there was a, some kind of a tacit understanding between Amadmi Party and the Congress, because you could not see the Amadmi Party in Himachal as was expected at one time, and you hardly mm. saw the, the Congress in Gujarat. So, I mean, this, it seems a far-fetched mm. thing, but from the way the campaigns were being run. So I would say, in answer to your question, the Congress has a good chance, a fighting chance, much depends on how it mounts its campaign. And of course, remember, the BJP is right. driven, uh, by uh, yeah. driven by factionalism. Driven by factionalism, apart from anti-incumbency. Right. Uh Important points there. PKD Nambiar, uh, how do you think uh, the race will play out in Himachal Pradesh? The key issues that could de decide the fate of uh, this, this election? Uh, well, the one thing I will tell you that I agree with Nirjaji that uh, unlike the Gujarat, it is not an easy cakewalk for BJP in Himachal. Uh, while I, I always support the, uh, the, the, the BJP's politics, but I am very clear that it is not that going to be a, as easy as going to be like in Gujarat. But having said that, the Congress, so in politics, it's always like this, that if how, uh, how the opposition, when you are in opposition is the right time, you will be able to do politics the better. So unfortunately, in the last five years, Congress have not been able to create that kind of a cadre or that kind of a strong leadership in uh, uh, Himachal. And you, we know that even Mrs. Singh is the one, Veerabhadra Singh's wife, he, he's the one who has been made a PCC chief and still relying on that particular family. On the other hand, there is true that is true that there are a large number of uh, ex uh, sitting MLAs were asked to, uh, were not given seat by the BJP. That is going to be on the ground for the people. All the anti-incumbency, whatever if they have little bit, can be taken away. Because generally on the ground for an MLA in a legislative assembly elections, the MLAs are the real villains. So they are the hero or otherwise the villain. So the moment mm -hmm. you take out those people, people do not have much of an issue with Modi or that the chief minister or for that matter to the party, but maybe with the MLAs. A large number of them asked to go or not been given ticket mm -hmm. takes away that uh, anti-incumbency pressure right. very less. But it's a very tough fight in the hill state. Uh, but the, it's just a, a matter of another mm -hmm. one month. I think uh, the, the result will come. But one thing I'll tell you, the uh, Amatmi yes. party has not been able to create any foothold in, uh, 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 like Uttarakhand, because they have learned that how the hill state of Uttarakhand, how they have been uh, done for them during the last election. Mm. The same, they, they now by now, they know. They, they're on, the senior leaders have uh, left Amatmi party mm. and joined uh, BJP, and they also had a large number of backlash for the first uh, three months of their campaign began. Okay. So now they have almost like a right, withdrawn, and they don't have much of a presence there. Huh. 
Okay, we've run out of time, but uh, Nirja Chaudhary, Piggy Dinambiar, thank you very much for being with us on News Center, setting up the big election in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. But uh, before we wrap, news coming in from Pakistan. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been injured after a man opened fire during his rally in Pakistan's Gujranwal. Imran Khan, who was ousted as Prime Minister earlier this year, has been leading a long march to protest against the Shabazz Sharif government. The legendary cricketer and the chief of the Pakistan Tehreek in Saf has reportedly been taken to hospital. Other PTI leaders have been injured as well. Today was day seven of Imran Khan's long march to Islamabad. He has called for fresh elections, terming the current Pakistani government illegitimate. Pakistani news media reports suggest multiple people have been injured and Imran Khan is, has reportedly suffered a bullet injury. So uh, let's wait for more details on that. No official confirmation coming in from uh, PTI or those close to Imran Khan. Definitely uh, some uh, disturbing news there. Let's, uh, let's wait and see what comes out. Those are pictures of Imran Khan being taken into ambulance. And uh, we are getting reports that he has suffered a bullet injury. Let's wait for more details as we leave you with those pictures. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Center for now. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.